What I love about art journaling is that it gives us so much creative uh, possibilities. So you can juggle between the things you are used to do and which you like and the things which are a little out of your comfort zone. And this is one of the out of the comfort zone page for me. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. It's Asia Marka here, a Lemon Creation. I am gonna be working in my altered book. That's gonna be page number two. I'm gonna be using uh, die cuts from uh, Paper Rose Studio. And for the full list of products, please check the description box below. You're gonna get it all there. And this is uh, some cutting die which I haven't used before. It's uh, some cheap brand actually from a European shop called Action. And uh, I am starting with some uh, embossing which I'm gonna place on this circle which is actually uh, like, you know, um, leftover from cutting the uh, dies. I'm gonna uh, emboss one of my uh, stamps from Run and Round uh, stamp set and uh, I'm gonna use the white embossing uh, powder to do it because I want to be doing resist technique which you're gonna see later and for that the white uh, embossing powder is just perfect and this one is a powder from WOW uh, of course to heat set it you have to be careful if the um, design is uh, intricate uh, you have to be uh, sure to start maybe uh, with the low heat setting or just start from underneath the paper so like that uh, the powder doesn't uh, fly away especially if the embossing ink is not very uh, fresh so just be careful with that and that's a small thing I learned uh, over the years and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue all these elements together but well, not together but onto the pages However, every time when I do that, I prefer to actually place them first, just like that, you know, see where they should go and then just uh, glue them when I'm sure that this is the layout I really want. As you can see, I am having a problem with my um, desk setup because quite often I actually pull the uh, pages I'm working on towards me and then there is like half of it on the camera only but this is the most important half <laughs> nothing is happening on the bottom of the uh, book and i apologize for that i really need to change my setup i am not very into things like that so and because i have to do it all by myself i have actually nobody really to help me uh, i am procrastinating but coming back to my page uh, i am gluing everything with just normal glue like a school glue for my children uh, because later I know I'm gonna cover everything with the chest so you know I don't need to really worry about that getting you know unglued when I'm adding my medias later on uh, because as I said there is gonna be a layer of uh, just on top of that but otherwise if you would do that and you would put straight away some uh, uh, wet medias I would advise you to actually use a mixed media kind of glue uh, and this is the page um, which or two pages which I am gonna be glued together because for now uh, the right hand side page I'm working on it's just a single page and in the old book uh, you know single page is not uh, a good way to go you know you kind of have to glue two or three pages together to uh, have a page which is more thick otherwise uh, there is gonna be seepage, the page is gonna warp uh, uh, and you know it's not gonna look very nice so that's what I'm doing always I haven't noticed before actually making uh, or gluing the elements to the page that it was just a single page and then when I just turn uh, by accident the papers uh, I've noticed that it's actually I need to fix that and as I mentioned before, I am using a white heavy gesso from Liquitex, which is a really good company. The gesso is really good. It's actually um, it's actually a heavy gesso. Uh, I had a heavy gesso from Finavar for four years, and there is nothing to compare. Actually, this one is really really heavy uh, in comparison. It's uh, you actually can change it into a, a gesso which is. Um, 
more liquid just simply by mixing it up uh, on the side with a little bit of water so if you see that your gesso is not really uh, spreading as you wish on the pages you can add some water and make it a little bit more liquid this is also a good tip to save some money you cannot do it the other way around if you buy a uh, like a normal gesso which is quite liquid you cannot really make it a uh, uh, thicker but if you buy a uh, heavy just so you can uh, of course make it more fluid and this is really cool and you can save money like that you know uh, you don't have to buy two uh, at the same time as you've seen uh, I had a small uh, circle there which was not totally glued I actually just add underneath a layer of gesso and it's gonna glue perfect perfectly just with a small layer of gesso because it's a tiny tiny circle if I was to do that on the one which is embossed, it may not hold it as well as the glue would. So, uh, you know, sometimes I'm just doing it uh, kind of quickly, you know, and thinking, hoping that uh, things will not go sideways. And this is what I'm doing also right now. I am uh, making my just some more liquid because I've noticed that at the kind of, this is not the spine, but, um, you know, in the middle of two pages, um, I couldn't make my just so uh, like run properly and this is very crucial um, part of the journaling you know uh, if you use altered books uh, the middle of the page should be actually covered either with masking tape or with gesso because otherwise you're gonna guys get some seepage it's almost sure if you use web media afterwards you're gonna use some uh, you're gonna get some seepage and now I just decided that I'm gonna add some texture so I'm, I was using a gesso but I was loading the paintbrush uh, quite heavily with the gesso and just kind of spreading it you know um, onto the page and um, these places when I uh, spread the gesso now I am adding a texture paste this is white crackle from Finavar still one of my favorite uh, texture paste I prefer the clear one but uh, when I was buying uh, they didn't have it in stock and since I'm using it not very often I just stayed with this one and uh, that's how it goes but a small um, like a hint from me if you use a texture paste like a crackle uh, with uh, some kind of other paste underneath the crackles are gonna be more visible they're gonna be bigger simply and the other hint do not uh, heat dry it, leave it to air dry if you want to have uh, nice uh, crackles. So here it is, my second set of stamps, so textures, and I'm gonna be using the one with numbers, and I'm gonna be also making a uh, embossing resist. And um, I'm using my stamps or my product, my stencils, uh, quite often in my videos, uh, because simply my, uh, my boutique, my uh, shop online, it's still very, very small. I don't have very many orders and uh, well this is the business thing you need to kind of do it and I also uh, heard uh, lately I got a, a lovely feedback from uh, Stacy and from Kelly uh, at least at the moment I'm doing this video from those two girls and Kelly said that she loves actually um, watching me working with my products because like that she knows uh, what we can do with them and uh, that people are more inclined to buy them so of course, you know, for my small business, uh, I have to do a small publicity like that. But I try to mix and uh, different products still, you know, and uh, give you different ideas. And I hope this is not too much of my products being used, but uh, I hope also you understand. And girls, thank you so much for all the feedbacks you are giving me. Uh, also on my uh, in my shop, uh, by sending me beautiful emails and by commenting this is so, so so important to me and believe me uh, without it I would probably quit already because you are actually my uh, biggest supporters so as you've seen I made some uh, embossing I'm sorry I was talking about something completely else but yes um, that was quite simple I made some embossing and now I'm heat setting it and so uh, that's the thing you know um, white embossing powder uh, when you add the colors uh, after to your page is gonna stay still white so that's what it's called uh, heat resist uh, um, technique or resist technique not heat resist resist technique simply 
and it looks really really nice i love the touch of white you know um on to the page and uh, i love how it reacts with the, or rather it doesn't react with the uh, paints so this is water soluble oil pastels from prima marketing and really believe me guys one of the favorite products uh, for me i have them for a few years i actually won them on a giveaway from a, uh, very nice, uh, very talented crafted uh, Karen Tamir and uh, <laughs> yeah it's been years I have them and sometimes uh, I just kind of abandon them even though they are still as well, they are on my desk they are actually of just in front of me but uh, I don't know sometimes I just don't think of, uh, about using them but every time I do I am actually mesmerized I am so in love with the projects I make with them because they are actually super nice but i have to tell you this is not my uh you know those are not my favorite colors i usually do something in the blues or greens or reds uh, kind of strong colors and i absolutely love um kind of earthy tones and uh maremis mollard marta Opkowska, who's by the way a really great crafter i learned so much from her and um mm, she is using this kind of earthy or subtle kind of pastel tones quite often in her journals and I absolutely love it and I think I'm, uh, I wanted to make a page a little bit uh, like influenced by her uh, so here it is Marta <laughs> I, I know you probably don't watch because you are too busy but still there it is, uh, the page uh, uh, influenced uh, greatly by uh, uh, Marta Łapkowska. I'll give you in the description box links, a link to her uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so for those of you who don't know her, you need to check uh, what she's doing. She also has a shop uh, when she says, uh, sells her uh, own designs. So, you know, it's, I believe that all of you know her, but still. Uh, coming back to my page. I kind of go crazy with the crayons. I don't really know how to put them. Uh, I was kind of staying in the places when there was already texture paste. So like that texture paste and the uh, elements I glued. And uh, I decided to add some water. But not I decided. This was, you know, this was this was my idea because with water soluble oil pastels, you kind of feel like you need to kind of add some water. So that's what I'm doing. But this was actually a mistake. Mistake in a sense that um, I didn't uh, master the brush and it kind of mixed up the colors. And there was this olive color, which is greenish. And it's completely completely disappeared from the page. The yellow to cover, uh, the uh, brown, which I wanted to make kind of shadows with it, is kind of not making shadows at all. So I was disappointed with it. And uh, to the rescue, a baby wipe. A baby wipe is a really great idea, actually, to uh, you know to use with acrylics and to use also with like water soluble. Mm, mm, crayons not not necessarily uh, pastels but i guess also uh, watercolor uh, crayons and you can manage a little bit better with it because when you add water with the brush there is uh, the brush is usually it's not usually it's more loaded with water than the baby wipe and so uh, you know it kind of goes all over and uh, the colors can mix very easily while baby wipe you can uh, have more control i think still so right now what I'm doing is I am trying to get rid of this yellow, which there is way too much of it. And uh, I need another color uh, to be visible also on the page because otherwise this is gonna be a really, really uh, like a boring, <laughs> uh, monotone uh, kind of uh, art journaling. And uh, that's what I'm doing. I am removing the excess of paint. I'm trying to recover the white parts also because I was thinking that the whole page cannot be colored. I was thinking this art journal page is gonna be actually still with white negative space, the way I like it. And uh, as you've seen already on the pictures, this is not gonna be the case, but 
uh, that was a happy accident of sorts and uh, the page worked as usually it does because when I'm making movies the pages actually work uh, uh, fine at the end but it was a struggle I have to tell you so now I decided to actually add a little bit of cobalt blue this is one of my favorite favorite colors from this set I already made um, I'm gonna try if I don't forget I'm gonna try to put the link to the other projects I made with uh, the, this color uh, it was uh, kind of a circle you know from my stencil uh, from a uh, broken circle stencil and I absolutely love this page and it worked uh, really so nicely with, the, uh, with this color and I fell in love with it now I am using the brush once again because simply I want this color this cobalt blue to to kind of take over control on the page but um, as you can see, I am not actually watering the brush uh, almost at all. So I'm using the water which is on the brush and just I think that's enough. And I am adding the color uh, kind of, you know, around the um, elements to make kind of shadowings, you know, uh, in the places when there is texture paste, just, just make it, you know, uh, I don't know, just give it a little bit of contrast. I have to say contrast is my biggest friend as is the white and black color <laughs> cannot live without them even though in this for this particular page I didn't use black but uh, yes there is white and so for me uh, you know I really need that to find my page balanced to find my uh, creation balanced I need those two colors and I need a contrast and guys, I'm gonna actually speed it up a little bit because as you can see, I am just uh, kind of uh, adding the paint, uh, like uh, making it flow with the water and just keep on doing that until I am uh, happy with it, with the end effect and thanks to this cobalt, I actually have the effect of, um, of deepness on the page. I hope you can see that already. It completely changed. Uh, before it was just yellow, like on top of yellow. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of really dull. But the moment you add uh, a little bit of dark color, you know, make kind of shadowing, it gets so, so much better. It gives the deepness, it gives, it gives the contrast. It makes everything uh, like whole. So here I am using some Uni Posca uh, white marker to make some white splashes. Um, well, <laughs> this didn't work out really. First of all, because I couldn't manage to, to get really nice splashes. I don't know how other crafters do that because I see them doing it on the internet, and I just know I have no idea. So I started using, um, you know, the water soluble oil pastels in white. To make some splashes but I decided that firstly I'm gonna try to add a little bit of white just by you know drawing on, uh, with it on the page and um, this actually uh, this didn't really work that well because um, the white wasn't strong enough to actually uh, cover the paint underneath so I am using again mini postcard this time to doodle a little bit and uh, make some kind of lines, some kind of uh, like uh, scribbles uh, without any sense, just like that, just so I have some white touches on the page and nothing else. Uh, and this once again uh, gives a little bit more of uh, this deepness, this um, texture which I needed very much because uh, <laughs> I am missing the white space guys, this is so silly. Uh, I know some of you are saying that you know how you cannot manage with uh, working with white space I cannot manage uh, working with uh, pages which are completely covered because I think that they are not well done I I doubt myself uh, really and uh, uh, I was telling you <laughs> just before uh, that uh, for this page I haven't used almost uh, any black but no that's not true I use a watercolor uh, pencil to get a tiny bit still more of the deepness so 
So as you can see, white and black, I cannot live without. Uh, this is my like addiction. I, I really cannot uh, just get away from these two colors. Uh, and uh, what else? That's basically what I was doing with this page. It's just uh, like coloring until the moment you look at it and you feel like, okay, I either go a little bit further and I completely wreck it or I'm happy with how it looks and I'm just leaving it because it, it looks quite nice. And that's the thing I was thinking when I finished this page, that I am actually happy, even though this is not a, a negative space uh, type of page. So, you know, a challenge for me. <laughs> there are things like that, you know, and I didn't really plan it like that. I was kind of wanted to do an abstract page and I still find that it's an abstract page, you know. There is nothing really, there is no uh, picture on it, there is nothing um, which just circles a little bit of clock there, a little bit of resist effect, uh, but you know, it's after all, it's a little abstract still. And these ones are also the pages I love the most with circles, I don't know, circles are having this perfection like in my eyes. And every time I make a page with circles, I'm happy. And I know that a lot of you think the same. And even though, you know, you may repeat yourself and do a circles like twice a week, uh, do it. I mean, if it's your cup of coffee, uh, you need to do it. Um, because that's the way you craft, you know. And this is the way I craft. So what do you think guys, is there enough deepness on my page already? Apparently I was thinking no, <laughs> something's missing. And what's missing? Well, of course, the touches of white. And as you've seen, my pastel white didn't work. So I am using now white gesso. And just with the tip of your finger, um, of your finger, of my finger in this case, I'm adding a gesso to the um, surfaces, which are a little bit raised. So where there, there is a crackle, when there are the paper elements and uh, that once again, if you add to the raised surfaces, it makes, you know, the shadowing, which you've done uh, earlier, uh, go kind of deeper. And so the elements which are raised are raised even more. It's like, you know, the reflection of light, which is falling of the, on the raised elements. Uh, I think that's the best, uh, you know, comparison I can give you and it makes the page looks even more deep. And I add uh, a small haiku poem, which I found on the internet and I print out and I absolutely love. This is it, guys. I hope you really like it. It's a very long video, but I still hope uh, it's something uh, you can appreciate. And thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, please share this video with your friends. I would appreciate it so much. Uh, any type of publicity for me, it's like, uh, you know, it means the world. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here, staying with me. I'm sending you big kisses and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.